So into our previous video already we have discussed about your MFA authentication. Now here in this video we are going to see how we can configure or how we can enable this MFA authentications for your users you have created to access your resources. So for that let us move to our portal here. So welcome back to our portal and now here I'm going to again search for your Active Directory that is your Azure Active Directory. So we found it over here. I'm going to move inside my Active Directory. Into our previous video already we have seen how we can add your Active Directory ID protections and where we have defined the conditional access, user flagged in for risk, razor sign -ins. And here I'm going to move into your MFA server, which is called as your multi-factor authentication server. And here I'm going to configure the settings. So the two-way text message timeout seconds, what you require that will be again, uh, I'll define um, for example, 50 seconds or 30 seconds, I'll provide, okay. And then what you need to do is you need to get started with your MFA server. So you need to download the uh, download center or you can generate your activation credentials to initiate your, in, initiate your usage. So I'll just download this. I'm going to download the same multi-factor authentication server here. What are the system requirements? You can check from here. What are the prerequisites we generally require that also you can check from the website here. You can see these are the details of your MFA system requirement for your MFA. These are the operating system where it supports. And here's the installation method, right? So instructions I don't want actually. So it will take very little time to download this authentication that is MFA authentication. We need to just run this particular server. You can see it is initializing your server. It is updating your um, language and into your machine it is installing your visual studio as i didn't had it yes and it will take a couple of seconds to start with your mfa server which you can create on your system same way this is a generate activation credentials to initiate use of this particular server so we will generate the uh, you know activation credentials here is email address and this is the password so I'm going to define the same here yes it will prepare to install this as we are using this uh, MFA server you generally have this particular link onto your server where generally in, in future if you will be creating any particular applications we will be creating onto your visual studio and then automatically it will be linked to your machine itself till then it is getting installed we will also move into i'll just take a snapshot and i'll copy this too so that uh, while installing our um, visual studio we'll be easily saving this and we will be prompted for uh, your password then I can provide the password and the email address so okay I'll paste it I'll just copy this as well again I'll paste it into your system done I'll minimize the same and save it okay so updating your server setting so it's it's updating your server setting completely once you have done with it, what we can do is um, we'll again move into your MFA and here this is the ready server which we will be getting over here. You can move into your server settings already been done. Account lockout if you want to define some account lockout for a particular user like if suppose your user has um, uh, uh, accessing your system or the user is accessing your system you want just a temporary lock account for the user who was not providing the proper password so it happens like you know some interviewers or some hackers they want to access to your applications to your services to your any particular resources so they what will they will do they will try using your password they will guess your password right so number of denies we are allowing so we will be allowing three different denies 
uh, and the lockout counter reset so till when you want to log this particular system and how when you want this particular systems to be enabled uh, after a second so you might have uh, seen into your mobile generally when you uh, provide the IPIN and uh, the IPIN you have entered um, wrong way into three or four times so automatically it gets locked same way it goes with your internet um, account or you can say net bankings internet bankings if you uh, define your password if you pass your wrong password after three times automatically it will again uh, don't allow you to log in so it will get locked out so here also we can define like if suppose a system get locked out so how many um, minutes generally you require so that it will go get your account lock and reset so i want to block it for five minutes then again we have defined it and save this uh, authentication so this is your account lockout policy which we have defined on your MFA server then block or unblock a user so if suppose you want to block a particular user to get access to your applications and the services so you can even add the or block the user so as of now we haven't created any particular user and uh, I'm going to block it so this can be an example when you block the user of your organization like if he's accessing your um, your applications which is provided by laptop which is provided by your organizations or any of your mobile phones so that mobile phone is lost or it's not properly used or if we find that user is like you know uh, doing something uh, or violating particular rules or he is not able to access it properly so he can block this user so he won't be able to ex get access to it like into our previous video we have created a rule or a policy we can say where generally we have allowed a particular user to get access to our application from our office that is a Mumbai or Bangalore office area and only through your Windows mobile phone so if the user has lost his mo Windows mobile phone and I don't want that someone else should access this particular mobile phone so I can block this user because the reason was the phone was lost so you can define the description there same way you can also define cache rules fraud alerts so you can also enable the fraud alerts so that you can allow users to submit the fraud alerts for example someone is accessing or someone is asking for your ipin or any of your devices uh, and they are getting some notifications so they can report you and uh, this particular user should be able to report this alerts or this is uh, the frauds which they are getting so you, the user are allowed to submit the fraud alerts automatically block users who report fraud right so uh, for example i want that the user who is getting up uh, so you know fraud who is actually fraud so automatically he should be blocked so what the code you want to report for, for the frauds during the initial greeting so you know we can also define you can be blocked right so this can be the greeting or this can be the uh, you know we can define block whatever you want you can define in the code over here or you can also input some uh, number over here like one two three four five so this is the number this is the code of your report during the initial greeting like if they have on uh, you know if your user is accessing and you just want the passcode from the user to authenticate whether he is the current user or he is a fraud so if he is not able to provide this particular password then he will be a fraud then you have the notification okay so just we need to save this if you have the notification area you can also define some notification policies for your uh, MFA users so you can define the email address uh, and uh, define the notifications to them same way you can provide a one-time bypass to a particular user and that will be for uh, you know the number of time you require the number of seconds you require and you can order this particular policy you can define the username and you can provide the 30 second policy and reason lost low so if we can also bypass a particular user over here and also we can go for phone call setting so even uh, we can define the phone calls and you know you can define the caller ID numbers for the use, uh, US users only you can see the US phone number only you can define you can also define the operator required to transfer the extensions or not so you can even enable or disable 
Same way you can define the number of five pin attempts allowed per call. So uh, as we know, whenever we go for any kind of verification, so we generally get the I pin. So number of five pins which you generally provide and that will be wrong, so automatically will be getting blocked. So this you can add, you can also add the greetings for our phone users. Here you can type anything like if I want to uh, type your extension prompt or fraud report, you can define which language you want to provide them the error or uh, message you can define. So I want in English application, you want any kind of application you are using. Like for example, I'm using NLP sound file. If you want to define you are blocked, if you want like you, it should show them uh, you are blocked or the sound should come. You want to define some audio files. So you can also define some audio files from here. Right now we don't have to. Okay. So this way you can add your greetings to um, different users, different types like greeting pin. You can define greeting standard. You can define retry pin. You can define. So these are the greetings generally you can define for different events. Same way you can also define the providers. Okay. You can also define the providers who are, you know, uh, able to access our model numbers and, you know, the services. So we can also define the name of your provider. We can also define the uh, usage model, whether you are, the user is per enabled user or per authentication we require. So uh, for a particular user or for, the, for a particular event, we can also define the authentication per user or the per enabled user also or we can say per authentication how many authentications we require so here you can define the number of providers for a particular application server settings we have so into server settings we generally define the settings for um, the two-way text message timeout seconds that will be for 30 seconds we have also seen how we can download your MFS server and how we can generate this one for it so here I'm going to download this authentication here. Yes, the components are getting installed. This is the MFA authentication server, which will be installed into my system. And I'll be sync with this uh, MFA authentication server as well. So now I'm going to get access to my MFA server. So for that, I'll just go here. I'll search for my MFA server here. And you can find this is the multi-factor authentication server. You're going to authenticate the server here. Click on yes. So this is your multi-factor authentication server is getting started here. And you can see it is showing you thank you for installing this. And we need to define the multi-factor uh, authentication credentials. This is our user ID, which we have copied earlier. We need to paste it on email address. Same way we need to copy this password and paste it over here done go for next okay it is showing you invalid username so i'll go and generate the same again into your mfa so this is what exactly we are going to generate it once it is generated i'll just copy this paste it here i'll copy this paste it here go for next so now it is accessing it Okay, so we will move into your Active Directory again and already we have configured the MFA server. I'm going to uh, enable my users so that they can define or they will be having an access to this particular MFA server here. Configure MFA trusted IPs. First of all, I'll do that. Okay, so I'm going to allow this, the users to create an application password to sign into your non-browser applications. The, uh, you know, verification method for, from will be your call to phone, text to your phone or notifications to your mobile applications and verification code. I'm going to click save here. You have updated it successfully. Right, so it has provided the authentication for our user to use this particular service settings. Okay, then custom preview for VPN also we are going to access a certificate we have already downloaded. Okay, fine. So again, we'll be moving back to our MFA. Click on yes. Again, we will be moving back to your MFA server over here. Okay, so this is actually we will require this is a policy where generally for server configuration, we need to register this authentication policies and this authentication policy will be available only after your 24 hours 
so uh, till 24 hours we need to wait for getting this particular policy and server to start so once the server is started you will be only able to get all the particular users who will be able to get login from this particular server as well as we can define the authentication and we can check the reports of your multi-factor authentication through your active directory id protections correct so this is how you can configure your multi uh, authentication server we can also have like you know all the reports of your mfa right now we have just enabled it so uh, you can also enable it after that you will be able to get all the reports of your mfa into your azure active directory id protections so here i have completed with this particular video into next video we are going to see the securities generally we have into your other particular platforms as well as in networks